Welcome back to Stitch Mania, the talk show, episode two. The second in a month. We promised we'd get back in the month. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Um, almost so, didn't, but we're but here. We, but we, we made it. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you to everyone who watched and subscribed and commented and emailed and shared. We we're really fairly overwhelmed by it um the and it was it was a little funny to sort of watch because we the the notifications from from youtube were just going and going and going and somehow we got the 500 subscriber email before we got the 100 subscriber email so we yeah. even overwhelmed youtube which was kind of entertaining uh, so we you know and we we appreciate all the likes but we also appreciate the dislikes because we that means we're actually floss tubers now. You know, that's one of those things that when a lot of floss tubers start out, they get those dislikes and they worry and get upset and get discouraged. And Garrett and I are like, woohoo! Yeah. Oh, yep, yeah, no, means we made it. And it we're just legit. That I, I'm just, I'm ready for my close up. <laughs> So if you ever get a, a dislike on your floss tube video, just know that it makes you an official floss tuber and it's a reflection on them, not on you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, we definitely appreciate all the ideas for shows and mm -hmm. guests that were given to us. Um, some of them we already had on our list. Some of them we totally didn't and that mm -hmm. was awesome. Um, so we're working hard on future plans, figuring out future guests. Our goal is next episode for having our first guests. Fingers crossed. Cross everything. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll tease that a little more when we get a little closer to, for instance, we have to line up a first guest. Shh, Garrett, don't tell them that. <laughs> but we're doing it. We're doing it. That'll be my task for later today. Uh, so we're, we're, all excited for it and we we really just we appreciate y'all so much yeah. and the it it's just been truly overwhelming and wonderful that we've gotten the support that we have and we can't thank you enough for that yes. and we, we, we really I mean it just proves to us that we are doing something um, that a lot of people are interested in that we're doing something right we're not just sitting here on a Sunday morning for our own entertainment, even though we're both highly entertaining and we're in fits of giggles before we even started this. But you know, we're really glad and excited to have so much support already and we really will do our best to make sure we live up to all of y'all's expectations. So speaking of emails and interests for topics for episode, uh, we got an email uh, since our last episode. The uh, person who wrote the email asked to remain anonymous, so we do thank them for submitting this email because we thought it was a perfect conversation topic. And it's about stitchy slumps and how we deal with them. Um, I'm going to read a few excerpts from this person's email just to kind of give an idea uh, of what where they were coming from. And Garrett and I figured we would just do kind of a back and forth conversation because we all know we see the posts in Mania. We talk to our friends about it we all know that stitchy slumps are one of those things that we all go through at one time or another. I'm still quasi in the middle of one. So we really thought this would be a great topic, especially considering everything that's going on currently. So a couple of uh, from the email. Uh, I find when I'm in a stitching slump, which I am now, I find myself only getting motivated by finding projects to do for other people. I don't want to stitch anything that reminds me of the horrible times we are going through, although I do think it's wonderful that designers have stepped up as they have with designs for stitchers to, to do that hopefully will help them get through these times. On the same hand, I have found myself purchasing some stash in a mood of defiance because I wanted to. Because <laughs> I wanted to do something normal. Yet I am also tired of going through the cycle of being in a slump, getting motivated by doing something for someone else, and then working on my own stuff because I feel guilty for taking me time to stitch for me or feel upset that people expect me to stitch for them. Stitching makes me feel calmer when I do stitch, but again, I don't remind, want reminders of the stressful times in my stitching. Totally, completely 
100% understand. Mm -hmm. um, this world right now is crazy. I mean, right, there, there's really no other way to put it, quite honestly. Um, and it is, uh, stitching is one of those things that I think all of us get into, not only because we enjoy the actual product of the craft, but because it is therapeutic. There are tons of news articles out there about uh, the therapy that comes from crafting and being mm -hmm. able to focus on something other than what may be going on around you at any given time. But it also, I think we all are very much aware of the fact that when we're stitching, we're pouring parts of ourselves into it. And so when we are having difficult times, sometimes that ends up you know, getting into our stitching and it, and it can be really hard. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to jump in anytime, Garrett. <laughs> um, well, I know stitching was actually something I started because I was specifically going through um, a very difficult time in my life. Mm -hmm. And it, it sort of, calmed the, for want of a better term, it calms the voices in my head. Mm -hmm. um, and it, so it, it's definitely something that I see as my way of sort of working through the stress in my life. And that's not to say that there aren't times where there are certain stresses that even stitching doesn't take care of. Yeah. But for the most part, that's really what I find is my best source of, of my best outlet for release. Mm -hmm. Cross stitchers like to stab things thousands of times. It's wonderfully therapeutic, but mm -hmm. we do understand that like I suffer from fibromyalgia, anxiety, depression. I have two kids. I have a husband. I have a dog. You know, life can get crazy and stitching can sometimes not be the outlet that I want. It can sometimes feel more like an obligation. Um, it can or I'm just not motivated to stitch. I got into a huge finish coma after I finished my Hoovianized time traveler last year. Um, and it just kept going and going. And then 2020 happened. <laughs> and I, I completely understand not wanting to stitch to remember these times. I have seen tons of beautiful pieces out there uh, that are, you know, everything from craftivism to, you know, fuck this shit, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, fuck 2020. Told you there's language people. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, more power to them. And then I see people who are stitching, you know, your Lizzie Cates and your, your Plum Street samplers and your Frosted mm -hmm. Pumpkins and everything just like normal. And I think that's wonderful. I think the big thing is that you need to give yourself permission to do what feels right to you at the time mm -hmm. and give yourself grace if that is not stitching at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, stitching is a hobby unless you are a designer and I know there's a few of you out there. Hi. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're a designer or you do this for a living and you have to stitch something because someone's expecting it for you to get a paycheck. Mm -hmm. This is a hobby. Um, mm -hmm. It is okay to put it down. I went through a stitching slump for five years before I came back to stitching when Stitch Mania happened in 2015. Five years. Because I finished my son's Christmas stocking for his first Christmas. He was born in 2010. And then I just stopped. All my stitching stuff got put away. I was not having it. And I came back when I wanted to. And that's okay. Um, it's totally okay. And one of the things I find as well because my knock on oh, wood laminate over here, <laughs> um, the, I've not had a huge stitching slump. What I tend to find that I go through is spells where I'll still stitch a little bit, but something else will sort of grab my attention for a little mm -hmm. while. Um, I did it earlier this year, a little bit with Animal Crossing. Mm -hmm. um, I did it, usually it's a video Still am. <laughs> uh, still am. And, that's okay too, because it's not saying that, oh, I don't like stitching anymore. Uh -huh. It's just, oh, I still have other interests that I've kind of neglected. Let me go back and look at those again. Yes. And, you know, there are times that one of the things I'm really trying to be better to give myself permission for, because I get into this, and those of you who watch me on Flosstube, you hear me probably about once a year ago say, I'm going back to my three finishes, one new start. 
largely because I'm trying not to overwhelm myself with new starts and whips. This is me giving Garrett a look across the internet void. <laughs> because, but by the same token, then I run into a sort of a situation I've run into this month where I've had three finishes within two weeks and I don't really want to start anything, but I don't really want to work on anything either. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, you know, and that's okay. Giving ourselves the permission to go, you know what, this is not a life or death situation. I do not hopefully have someone standing with a gun to my head saying, you are going to stitch on Al Forest Embroideries Atlantis, and if you don't, you are going to die. And if you're in uh, that situation, get out. <laughs> yes. Or stitch until they walk away so that you can get out. Yes, exactly. Uh, um, <laughs> the, you know, it's, so it's, a lot of it is giving ourselves the permission to not be so hard and restrictive on ourselves. And I know hard. that's, oh, it, it can be. Um, I mean, I, there have been several times where I've said, you know, I really, I'm mad that it's taken me this long to finish this project or that I put it down for this long. But by the same token, if I'm not interested in it, then working on it when I'm not interested is just going to make it worse. And while there are some times and some tricks that you can do to help with those things, my I've, I've sort of developed the new rule of if I pick this up three times, put like a handful of stitches in it and then move on to something else, it just needs to be retired. It doesn't mean that I don't still love the piece or that I don't still want to finish it. It just means that at this moment, it's not what's speaking to me. Mm -hmm. well, and I think one thing as a society, not even just cross-stitch, but just society as a whole right now, with COVID and being in our, stuck in our homes and dealing with all sorts of situations politically and socially and economically and all of that sort of thing. One thing that I think we've had to learn as a community as a whole is how to take care of ourselves. Mm. And we are at I know I, I this way personally, but I think the majority of people are so generally focused on doing things that other people expect of them or require of them. When you go to a job, you're doing what your boss tells you to do and what your job expectations are. When you're home being a parent, you're doing what you need to do to take care of your kids. When you're in a relationship, if it's a healthy relationship, you're doing what you need to do to help, you know, help your spouse and support your spouse or, or partner or significant other, whatever it may be. And we often forget about ourselves. And so it is a lesson that has to be learned. Self-care is a legitimate thing. Mm -hmm. And for sometimes, at some point, that may be stitching. You know, like we were saying before, stitching can be a wonderful stress release. It can be one of those things where you need to give yourself permission that, you know what, I'm freaking out. I need to sit down and stitch for half an hour and I may not get a ton of progress, but I just need to go and stab some fabric mm -hmm. and get some stress out. Or it may be, you know, I have this project sitting here that I started. I am not feeling it. Instead of weighing yourself down with guilt or stress of, um, needing to finish something is to be able to say, you know what? I'm a grown adult. I know what I need to do. I'm going to put this away and I'm going to go pick up my Nintendo Switch and play Animal Crossing, or I'm going to go pick up a book, or I'm going to go watch a movie, or I'm going to go take a nap, or I'm going to go mm -hmm. do something else that actually calls to me more. Stitching slumps are natural mm -hmm. and they happen whether you're in a global pan pandemic or not <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but that still is a skill you know it, that you it is okay and some uh, what uh, what we can we can't tell you what to do to get out of it uh, unfortunately mm -hmm. because yeah. it's a different thing for every person mm -hmm. some people you know get out of their stitching slumps because like Garrett was saying you know you were saying how you didn't want to work on stuff that you have well, some people get out of their slump by, by kidding up a new start or yeah. starting something. Oh, for me, the two, the two best things are either, even if I don't start it, mm -hmm. kidding up a new start and sometimes mm -hmm. putting like a handful of stitches in it or 
like I did yesterday, organize some of my threads and floss and get them kind of back into an order so I can kit up new starts. Organizing and going through your stash can be amazing ways to find something you completely forgot you had, even if you mm -hmm. have it documented in your cross stitch app. I'm not speaking from experience or anything here. And I am the stash queen. Sometimes it's okay to go buy yourself something pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Retail therapy. Now, just make sure you don't kill yourself doing yes, the retail. And make sure you're financially <laughs> able to do it and it doesn't yes. cause additional problems. Um, but responsible retail therapy yes. <laughs> is a perfectly valid way yes. of getting out of your situation because sometimes that is what it takes. Exactly. Uh, and, and let's be honest here. Whether you stitch something to commemorate 2020 or not, this is not a year that any of us are going to forget. No. And it's going to permeate everything in our lives from this point forward, whether mm -hmm. it is in stitching or not. And that can be overwhelming. And that can make you want to throw something across the room and scream at the heavens because, oh my gosh, how much more can we get from 2020? And I say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. I'm knocking on all sorts of wood. <laughs> We're about to reach level eight, people. Um, but it's okay. And you know yourself. And just remember that ultimately the most important part of the cross-stitch hobby is not the actual project. It's the stitcher. Mm-hmm. And, and your level of enjoyment. Exactly. It's not that I totally subscribe to Marie Kondo and her, does this bring me joy? You should only have 35 books because bitch be crazy. <laughs> uh, um, but if a project isn't bringing you joy and you just don't absolutely have to work on it, don't work on it. No. Um, one of the things I've discovered is and longtime floss tube viewers will know this. I hate borders and I hate solid fill. So what I've learned how to do when I've got those projects is I work a length of thread or mm -hmm. two, depending on what, if it's got a quick color change. And then I work on another part of the pattern. Yes. And then I come back to it and it balances it out. We give so, that advice a lot. Yeah. And it's that, so the, you know, you, there are ways to learn tricks to help yourself with mm -hmm. that. But at the end of the day, if it's not sparking joy, mm -mm. it's okay to put it away. And it's okay to UFO stuff. It is okay, perfectly okay. If you've got only a handful of stitches in it, you think, you know, I started this just because I wanted to start something, but mm -hmm. I really don't like this. Pull it out. Reuse your fabric. Exactly. If you're too far along and you've discovered, oh God, this is awful. I hate it. I never want to see this again. It's okay to throw the fabric away. And there it, are groups out there, too, that will take them. Yes. So, you can always well. adopt them out. Yeah. Uh, and if it's one that you do want back, you can even say, hey, I'll give this to you. You finish it. You send it back to me. Exactly. Do it. Um, there are plenty of people out there who that's something they enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it because mm -hmm. I just couldn't. But there are people who can. And my hat is completely off to them. And also, along that same token, if it's cross-stitching itself that isn't bringing you joy, it's okay to step away from it for a time. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely okay to step away from it. Like I said, I am still currently in a quasi-stitching slump. Um, I have more pieces than I'm willing to put on video started, <laughs> because my mother may watch this at some point. Hi, Mom. <laughs> mine will not be, but mine um, would not <laughs> but um i've only got one piece that i'm working on right now and i'm working on it sporadically and part of it is because it's um another big conversion it's my uh black lives matter conversion of lady justice by mirabilia and so it is a heavy topic um it does give me release about that heavy topic to work on it some sorry everything's going off because it's 9 a.m and so alarms are going off <laughs> other times you know i it, i just i'm not in the mood for stitching because i things have been wearing me down in this pandemic i'll be honest with you there are days mm -hmm. that are a whole lot harder than others you may not believe it watching this video but i am more introverted than i am extroverted and i have not had alone time 
of any real substantive variety, like completely alone in my house, except me and the dogs since my kids came home for spring break. Because my husband's working from home, my kids are here. They're gonna be starting the school year electronically um, for the first four weeks for sure. And then we're probably gonna keep them home the whole first quarter. I need some alone time. And so, you know, stitching right now, if I feel like doing it, I pick it up. It's got, I've got it all right next to me in easy reach. If I don't want to do it, I've got my switch in my hand or my computer up or a book in my hand or TV show on. It's okay. Mm -hmm. and, and if you need someone else to tell you it's okay to not stitch something, Garrett and I are here to tell you it's okay to not stitch something. No one's going to judge you. It is, you need to do, you only got one life. You need to do things that make you happy. Exactly. Because that's what this is all supposed to be about. Bringing us happiness and joy. Mm -hmm. And we will look forward to when you get that motivation again. And mm -hmm. want to start sharing a piece. Because usually when someone comes out of a stitchy slump, they're like, oh my gosh, here's this, here's this, here's this. And it's mm -hmm. great. <laughs> but we're that doesn't make you any less a member of the stitching community nope. it doesn't make you uh any less of a stitcher it actually probably mm -hmm. makes you more of a true stitcher to be going through mm -hmm. just like dislikes make you a floss tuber mm -hmm. and more than anything it doesn't make you less of a person no absolutely absolutely so i think we probably covered that pretty well what you think garrett i think so and to uh, that viewer, thank you again for your email. I hope we addressed the questions and concerns that you mm -hmm. uh, brought up. If not, you got our email, let us know. Mm -hmm. um, and like Garrett said at the beginning, um, we are, uh, this topic came as an email for when mm -hmm. we were trying to figure out what we we're gonna do for this uh, episode. I was like, oh, this is perfect. Let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. And then those topics, so, we will do we, it. Yeah. We, we definitely we definitely welcome the suggestions and we definitely welcome hearing your feedback about what we've said. Yeah, uh, what are your thoughts? Put yeah. in the comments below. Let us know your comments. thoughts. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yes. So, uh, one other thing we decided that we wanted to start doing in these episodes is something we're calling our current favorite Instagram hashtag. Um, we, know that Instagram is a place a lot of people like sharing their work, uh, like seeing other people's work. And, you know, we all know the typical hashtags. We'll have a bunch of them in the comments below. <laughs> um, we even have an Instagram account for this channel now. I'll put that Instagram or that, uh, yeah, that Instagram account. I need more caffeine. It's so early. <laughs> um, down in the, in the description box with all of our other information below. Um, but it, it, if you're not following or if you're only following the hashtag cross stitch or stitchers of Instagram or you know all of the different ways you say cross stitch in all of the different languages you may not Punto see de Croix. exactly I'm like oh look there's the there's the Russian there's a Spanish there's a French <laughs> which I think is great um but there are other hashtags out there that can expose you to other um stitchers who and other projects and other needleworks that we wanted to bring them to you guys to let you know about them and see if you might be interested um, to follow them. And so we're gonna try to do this every episode. We're gonna try to find a, a new uh, Instagram tag. It may be cross-stitch related, it may be embroidery related, um, it may be something else altogether, who knows? It may be something for when you're in a stitchy slump, mm -hmm. who knows? But um, so I found one that I have been following for a while. It's hashtag tiny pricks project. <laughs> <laughs> so this is also a user handle and it is also there's also a website run by this group by the same name and it's a craftivism movement um, and i'm going to tell you i'm going to take the words directly from their website as to what they are um this is a tiny pricks project holds a creative space in a tumultuous political climate the collection counterbalances the impermanence of Twitter and other social media and Trump's statements as president through the use of textiles that embody warmth, craft, permanence, civility, and a shared history. The daintiness and integrity of each piece stand in stark contrast to his presidency. So, you know, you'll get your little uh, regular cross-stitch fabric with a very random, strange quote from Twitter, or 
you'll have a pair of underwear that says you can grab people by the or you'll have uh, you know some of the older embroidery uh, tablecloths that we all see in the antique stores that will have some other quote or issue going on it is a wonderful craftivism movement and even better is that anyone can join it because it's a public art works project so anyone can join into it there is information on their website which we will include below mm -hmm. that if you want to create a piece they will you follow the instructions you can send it into them it will be put on display with pieces from hundreds of other people pieces have come from all over the world and i just think it is um a wonderful uh way to uh bring or it's a wonderful craftivism angle um because there are some batshit crazy things said out there mm -hmm. um <laughs> and it is very interesting to see the counterbalance of the batshit crazy with the beauty of traditional textile arts mm -hmm. so that is my instagram hashtag hashtag tiny pricks project it will be listed in the description box below so mine is kind of a combination of two. It's the Representation Matter Sal and the Diversity and Inclusion Sal. Um, and the idea was um, the importance of being able to see yourself in art. It was started by a group, um, it I believe Alicia at Resistitch was the sort of the, the forerunner of it, but it's a combination of Alicia, Diana at its Kismet underscore stitches, EJ at EJ underscore creates, Melanie at Soulful Planning Stitcher, um, Michelle at, I think it's, is it Bendy Stitchy? I think it's Bendy Stitch. I, I know her well enough in person. I don't actually know her in I think it's Bendy Stitch. I think it's Bendy Stitch. And uh, Jesse Marie at uh, Jesse Marie. Jesse does. Uh, yeah. And um, the idea was the diversity inclusion. Um, specifically things like skin conversions um, because we can convert any chart any pretty lady quote-unquote to have any skin tone um, and wouldn't it be better to not have that so by doing the diversity and inclusion your idea the idea is to either do a skin conversion mm -hmm. do a pattern that's already of a person of color mm -hmm. and with any luck it will help raise awareness to the designers out there that we want to see women or people of color mm -hmm. beyond just the every once in a blue moon when Mirabilia does one or um you know to yeah. you know some of the some of the others out there like Mirabilia they occasionally will do one but it's not terribly often no um Brittany from Ingleside Imaginarium collaborated with um a fashion designer named Ebony Short and the result was a lady named Ella, uh, which is gorgeous. She is stunning. Um, and so I even, and this is one of those times where you're going to see our stitching because it's on topic. I took um, last year's Cross Stitcher magazine did a fairy tale princess theme. Mm -hmm. And you've probably seen me posting it. It's by Shannon Christine. And it was all white ladies. So with the exception of two that had already been stitched and then one in each row, I've done a skin conversion. So we have a person of color, Rapunzel, and what was originally Alice, but I changed to Dorothy because it's me. Um, <laughs> a person of color, Little Mermaid, a person of color, Little Red Riding Hood, a person of color, Sleeping Beauty. That's um, so awesome. And it's been so easy mm -hmm. to do and has required no real changes mm -hmm. um you know because there are you know black people can have blonde hair um mm -hmm. and so it's been or red hair in the case of the little mermaid <laughs> or i guess it's more red <laughs> but um but that's been it's been really really it's been a fun challenge mm -hmm. for myself just to see how I can get the various skin tones when I can only use two colors. Right. Um, which has unfortunately limited it a little since I haven't had a full enough range to be able to safely um, 
yeah. safely do and have it register what I've done. Sure. Uh, but it's been a really, really fun experience. And hopefully it sort of throws out there the idea of not only can anything be converted, but that our traditional fairy tales don't have to be so traditional. Exactly. I mean, I, that I, my uh, Lady Justice by Mirabilia is mm -hmm. my piece for this stitch along. And this, that's actually the piece that brought me back out of my stitchy slump. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't bring it to show because I'm still currently on her dress and I'm doing a full convert, like the entire thing is changed. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some links uh, for, who is it, Lord um, Libidin? Is that what it, how yeah. we pronounce it? <laughs> I think, think that's what we settled on. Uh, we can include the links. Uh, they have some uh, wonderful conversion links of traditional white Caucasian skin tones to different uh, other possible skin tones. And they have it for hair too. Yes. And that's actually that's what I thing. used. Yes. That is actually what I used for my conversion for my Mirabilia. But that, those hashtags, they've got some gorgeous, I mean, mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. And that's, Absolutely. yeah, I mean, that's the other thing, you know, what we call the pretty ladies, the mm -hmm. Mirabilias, the Joan Elliott's, you know, that are gorgeous, stunning pieces as they are designed in their own right. But being able to see them converted to other races of the pretty ladies helps to reinforce the idea that pretty ladies don't only have to be white. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually kind of reached a the point that unless it's meant to be a <laughs> unless it's meant to be a specific person mm -hmm. um i'm going to try not to just do I, i'm going to try to make sure that i'm significantly more diverse yeah with my stitching in terms of skin tones and if it, it I will say it can be an overwhelming process to sit down and start how, uh, figuring out how to convert, even if you're mm -hmm. just converting skin. Mm -hmm. um, that was one thing that I did when I, my time traveler, I did not convert the skin because I was actually making her be the 13th doctor who is a blonde white lady. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I changed everything else. I changed your hair color, changed your dress. Um, if you're looking for a significant change, or even if you're not, uh, two suggestions that I have just from having done it so often. Um, what I did with my, my Hoovianized time travelers, I had a black and white copy of the pattern. And then I took, um, and by copy, I mean working copy. Um, and then my, I took colored pencils and I matched up colored pencils to my uh, DMC threads. And then I colored it in to be able to see how it was gonna look. And same thing, the other thing with uh, just skin tone and hair, you can pull out the colors that are called for and then pull out the colors that you're looking to convert and see if it, if it feels right to you, if it looks mm -hmm. like it's a good enough conversion. Because sometimes, you know, I have seen, you know, that's a little too much of a contrast between these two colors. Like you were saying, you've mm -hmm. only got the two colors to work with really with the skin tones for your piece. That makes it a little bit, like you said, limiting because you don't want it to be here is one shade and here's another shade on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. <laughs> and you know there are going to be times where you will pick up a color mm -hmm. and you'll lay it out and you'll think yeah this is what I want to go with and then you start stitching and once it's stitched it yeah. doesn't look right and that's okay too. Absolutely. Um, and you're gonna know usually within about 15 stitches if the color is gonna work or not. And if you're on the uh -huh. fence ask in the group. Uh-huh. Or your friends. Because a lot of the times there are colors that, that I've started and gone, I'm not sure about this. And everyone else is like, no, 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 it's going to be fine. Yeah. And, it's, and there are times like, I'm not so sure about this. And everyone's like, so it's yeah. don't, don't be afraid and don't get discouraged. And sometimes you have to get a little creative and blend two colors together to get what you're actually wanting. Yay, tweeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay. Everyone's favorite because we are limited we are limited by what dmc and the other brands offer and even at that sometimes picking out a variegated is the color is mm -hmm. ends up being the best option all around absolutely um we will put these hashtags and we had the the ones that were that garrett was speaking of we have we're those are probably gonna be just permanent hashtags mm -hmm. on our group um because we do support 
uh, everything that those stitch alongs are doing. And, I, and those aren't stitch alongs, at least I don't think so, correct me if I'm wrong, Garrett, that have any end date. No, you know, they don't, not, not to my knowledge, at least. I mean, it's just, it's just a constant going on and going along. And uh, I'm sure it's gonna be one of those things where, you know, if you like, if you find yourself, like Garrett was saying, wanting to keep that as more of a, a focus it can just keep on going. So those are probably going to be permanent uh, hashtag links that we include in this group because, or in this uh, channel because we do support everything that those stitch alongs are doing. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll include the, the links or the hashtag handle, Instagram <laughs> handles. I can talk. I really can. Um, the Instagram handles of all of the, the founders for mm -hmm. um, that for this time so that everyone can uh, go and follow them as well. Uh, if you don't already, I, I think I follow almost all of those mm -hmm. so that um, w you can see their work in, and other activism that they have spearheaded in this great. And yes, the lady named Ella by Brittany from Ingleside Imaginarium. It's gorgeous. Even yeah. the like part, even though the, even though the cover photo is only, is only still partially stitched, it's still it's absolutely stunning. It is gorgeous. And we'll put a link to that because yeah, it's one of, it's a piece that um, you can get for a donation. All she's asking mm -hmm. for is a donation and proof of donation to uh, one of, I think, a couple of different. Are? Yeah, there's three organizations. Three organizations. You, so you choose, you, you put, send in your donation, you send her your receipt or a screenshot of your receipt, and then she'll send you the pattern. So it is a great org it's a great uh, piece if done for great causes and so yeah we'll include a link to that as well cuz it is a stunning piece. Mm -hmm. I think that's all we got this week. I think so. Um so thank you all for joining us for episode 2. Yeah. Uh, um and uh if I I this will probably come up after my floss tube for this morning, so. Because I have editing to do. <laughs> and as we all know, I have the editing skills of a drunk three-year-old. And on that note, we hope you all have a wonderful stitchy week, stitchy day, stitchy however long it is until we see you again. Uh, we'll, be, <laughs> we'll be in touch. We will, mm -hmm. we will uh, let you guys know when we know who our next guest is going to, our first guest is going mm -hmm. to be we're excited about it we'll post an announcement in stitch mania and probably on our instagram handle um, uh -huh. but otherwise we love you guys have a wonderful stitchy day and we'll see you next time oh. Bye. Bye.